Hello artists! The materials you're going to need for this project are pencil, crayon, and watercolors. If you don't have any watercolors, you could also use markers and do a marker painting, but we're going to stick with our watercolors for now. We're going to draw ourselves a radial flower. That means it's going to radiate out from the center. So we need to draw ourselves a center. This time I'm going to draw a circle. You can put that circle anywhere on your page. Now I'm going to draw my petals coming out. They can be whatever shape you want. This is kind of a classic petal shape as a point on the end. I'm going to do this all the way around the circle. And I'm turning my paper instead of just trying to turn my arm because it makes it a little bit easier. Your hand has a little bit of a muscle memory. So if it's doing the same motion over and over again. Now I'm going to do the second layer and these go in between the first layer. As we go farther out, these petals are going to get bigger. So these ones on this section are about the same. And then the next layer will be bigger. So in between those, the layer that I just did, even bigger petals. We're going to keep going and keep going. I'm going to speed up the video here. There you have it. Let's fill the page. Now let's look and see a, just a different shape. If you wanted to do something more like a rose, you could start with kind of a swirly center and the shape of the petals would be kind of this beany organic shape. And these ones touch the sides of each other instead of the middle. When I do my second layer, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in between. So I start in the middle of one petal and end at the middle of the next petal. So you can just see how this is a different shape from our other flower. And it's just another option you could do for your flowers. It depends on what you would like. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit here. And there you have it. Let's flip back over to the other side. So we're going to start the next step. In this step we're going to create a wax resist using a crayon. You would want to choose a crayon that's a color that you want for your flower. I'm going to be doing my flowers with blues and, and violet so I chose a blue violet crayon. When you trace your flower you're going to want to make sure that you push nice and hard because what you're trying to do is build up a waxy layer because so when we do the watercolor it will repel the wet watercolor because wax resists water. So I'm going to do this on all of my petals, pushing hard. If you wanted to, you could switch colors of crayon. I'm going to stick with the same color just for unity. So it's your choice. Let's speed up the video again. Now that that part's done, I just shook off a little bit of flakies that I had because I pushed so hard. Now we're going to move into our watercolors. Remember that watercolors are thirsty paints. They need a drink. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add water. Um, you're going to select three colors. These are three colors that should be next to each other. These are called analogous. They're color neighbors on the color wheel. When they blend, they are harmonious and look calming. So I am choosing violet and blue and the third color is going to be blue violet and that's what you get when you mix blue and violet so i put some blue over on my mixing tray here and then i'll add my violet again mixing makes that third color the blue violet I can use this mixed blue violet that I'm making or I can let the blue and the violet mix together on the paper as I make my layers for the petals. You can see that blue is starting to get more violet. I'm going to set it off to the side and start in on the flower itself. Start with one color and this is towards the center. I'll paint that one color. I'm making sure to use lots of water because water colors are supposed to look watery. If your colors are looking really thick and dark, add more water. Now I'm adding the violet towards the tip. 
and where the blue and the violet meet, I'm going to mix those together to get that kind of transition blue-violet in there. Again, those are analogous colors, ones that are next to each other. Blue, blue-violet, violet are analogous. Blue-violet is also called a tertiary or intermediate color. Mix a primary color plus a secondary color that's next to it on the color wheel to get a tertiary. I'm going to do this on every petal so it does take a little bit of time. If you try to color the whole thing all at once, what's going to happen is that it won't look like each individual petal is a petal. It'll just look all smeary all over the place. So make sure you're doing one petal at a time. We're going to go a little bit faster now. There you have it. All of those petals are all filled in now with a beautiful gradient from blue to violet. The blue violet in the middle where they meet. Now we're going to turn our attention to the center after letting it dry just a little bit. The center you can make pop by doing a complementary color like the opposite of violet is yellow. I could do that. Or the opposite of blue would be orange. That would be a choice I have to make. But I've decided that I'm going to just make a lighter blue violet in the center so it doesn't stand out quite so much. I just added a lot of water to my blue violet mix to make it lighter. Alrighty, let it dry and you are all done. Ta-da! Good job.